Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate, and I'm opting to wear some non-geek, non-internet merch this week because I just got back from West Lafayette, Indiana, where I gave a talk at Purdue University for its Dawn or Doom conference. And a great time was had by all, and uh, I picked up this uh, Purdue hoodie uh, that I knew I had to wear on this week. But enough about all of that. Let's get into this week's Dev News. First up, a reminder of some of the events coming your way up by the end of the year. So first, on December 3rd through 6th is the Dev Intersection Conference in Las Vegas, and there will be tons of talks across lots of different technology areas. But at the same time, Microsoft and Dev Intersection are co-producing Microsoft's Azure and AI Conference, and that will be co-located at Dev Intersection. And this is Microsoft's first Azure and AI Conference, and the sessions and workshops are all about fusing those two worlds of Azure and AI together. But if you can't make it to Vegas, on December 4th, Microsoft Connect 2018 is taking place online, where we will be streaming sessions from uh, the Azure and AI conference and also doing live coding sessions on Mixer and Twitch. There will be an AMA with Scott Guthrie. There will be interactive sessions with tons of amazing people like Suze Hinton and Eric Boyd and Scott Hanselman and Cecil Phillip and Amanda Silver and way more. So details for all three conferences are linked in the show notes and like the description down below. And like I said, you can tune in on December 4th for Connect 2018 online. Now, I'm not going to be in Vegas because I will be in Berlin to kick off the Ignite Tour, which starts December 6th, 2018. So what's the Ignite Tour? Well, it is a free two-day event taking place at more than a dozen cities across the globe where there will be sessions and workshops over new coding techniques, how to optimize cloud infrastructure, workplace modernization, and more. And there are six tracks full of deeply technical sessions, and you can mix and match what sessions you want to attend. And I'm actually going to be at six of these different tour stops, so if you do see me in your city, be sure to say hello. And details on Ignite the Tour along with registration or save the date links are in the show notes and description down below. In some update news, .NET Standard 2.1 was released this week. And if you're not familiar, the .NET Standard is a formal specification of .NET APIs that are intended to be available on all of the different .NET implementations. And this is really important when you remember that there are a bunch of different flavors of .NET. There's like .NET Core, there's, there's .NET Framework, and, uh, and, and different versions of each. But anyway, since .NET Standard 2.0's release about a year ago, .NET Core 2.1 is shipped, and .NET Core 2.2 is about to ship. So the team thought that it was time to update the .NET Standard to include some of the new concepts, as well as a number of small improvements that make your life easier across various implementations of .NET. And all in all, there are a bunch of additions uh, to the API. Some are brand new and some are existing that were added to the standard to make working across .NET even easier. And I've got a link in the show notes and description um, to a blog post highlighting some of the changes, as well as a link to the API diff if you want to see everything that's been changed or, or added. And on that note, because of the API additions in .NET as standard 2.1 require runtime changes in order to be meaningful, .NET Framework 4.8 will remain on the .NET Standard 2.0 rather than implementing .NET Standard uh, 2.1. But .NET Core 3.0, as well as upcoming versions of Xamarin, Mono, and Unity, will be updated to implement .NET Standard 2.1. And just for anybody who's curious, there is a link in the show notes and description highlighting the differences between .NET Framework 4.8 and .NET Core uh, 3.0 from last month if you want to get a refresh on how all these different flavors work. And speaking of other updates, there are a few other things to other various tools that I wanted to point out. And so first, uh, uh, Tara Raj has a great blog post on the Windows command line blog highlighting how the new stuff for WSL or the Windows subsystem for Linux in the Windows 10 October 2018 update. And for me, the highlights are notepad support for Linux line endings. Seriously, I shouted out loud. Like, I was so happy when I heard about this during the build keynote. This is amazing and a very long time coming. And you can also now launch a Linux shell from the File Explorer via context menu. And this is also an awesome feature. And it's one that the community really, really wanted. So I'm glad that it's there. And there are lots of other features, too. So check out the blog post for all the details. But I do want to point out that even more Linux distros are available in the Microsoft Store. And this includes Ubuntu 18.04 and OpenSUSE 15. And there's also a new distro that I tried out last month called WLinux, which is actually a paid Linux distro available in the Microsoft Store. 
I know you're thinking like paid, aren't Linux distros like usually free? And yeah, um, um, and the nature of the GPL means that the source for WLinux is online and if you want to build it yourself, you can. Um, but anyway, not to go on a total tangent, but I really like WLinux because it's super optimized for WSL and it's based on Debian um, and it removes stuff that's not supported by WSL like systemd. So if you're looking for a WSL optimized distro, especially one that's Debian based, this is a really good choice. Anyway, it links to all the stuff from the blog post, and W Linux uh, is, is a link, there, there's a link there too. So check that out in the description down below. And another update news, the popular code formatter Prettier, which is available as a VS Code extension, was just updated to version 1.15, and there are tons of new features, including support for HTML, Vue, Angular, and MDX. But I really wanted to give a shout out to the release notes, which are linked in the show notes in the description, because they are some of the best I've seen. And so check it out if you're looking for a good code formatter. And if you're already using Prettier, well, update, because Prettier is prettier. PowerShell and Azure Cloud Shell is now available, and this is great for PowerShell fans, and PowerShell now has a startup experience that's on par with Bash, and it offers a consistent tooling experience uh, because Cloud Shell is actually running a Linux container that uses PowerShell Core. And there are some other great features too, so check out the show notes and description down below for a link with all the details. And speaking of PowerShell, uh, now that PowerShell Core is becoming a thing, I'm talking to more and more Windows developers who really like it, but also want to have a way that they can install it alongside regular PowerShell, especially when they're using Visual Studio Code. But fortunately, Neil uh, Peterson wrote a great blog post explaining how to do just this. So check it out in the show notes and the description. Um, there's a link for that. And uh, thank you for doing this, Neil. Over on Medium, John Papa has a great post about how to set up environmental variables with Node.js. And this is especially important if you want your Node projects to be deployable from other locations, you're, you, know, you want to put them on the cloud, or inside a container. And John's post is a great walkthrough of how to set up environmental variables in Node and some tips for optimizing your .env files. On Channel 9 this week, we've got two great episodes of VS Toolbox showing off Blazor. And Blazor is an experimental .NET web framework that uses C Sharp and HTML, and then it runs in the browser via WebAssembly. And since WebAssembly is one of those hot buzzwords, you know, it's totally the new hotness for 2018 going into 2019, if you're interested in learning more about it, you definitely want to check out those two episodes. And also on Channel 9, it is the 100th episode of the IoT show. So congratulations to Olivier for 100 episodes, and here's to 100 more. And um, speaking of IoT, Coding Bandit has a really great unboxing for the Azure Sphere MT3620 Developer Kit. And when I spoke at Purdue the other day, one professor even asked me about this very topic. So I'm, I'm super stoked to share this link with him uh, by email. But check out the unboxing, which is also a great walkthrough of getting started with the Dev Kit and Azure Sphere. And links are in the show notes down below. I also want to give a shout out to Fabio Favonato who wrote a great post for his Medium blog this week called Why I Wrote uh, 33 VS Code Extensions and How I Manage Them. And it's linked down below, below, but it's a terrific read, and I would like to thank Fabio for giving so much back to the code community, both through his extensions and in this write-up. And now it's time for my pick of the week. And this pick has everything I love about stuff for a pick of the week. It has retro computing, it's nerdy beyond belief, and a ton of work has gone into it. So uh, Tony Landy has created a great demo showing off how Azure DevOps can be used to develop, build, package, and deploy a program written for the Commodore 64. That's right, this is not a joke. Uh, Tony's walkthrough is amazing, and he even published a bunch of code extensions so that anyone else who wants to do this, say you're a retro gaming developer and you love 8-bit systems, you can do it too. Anyway, the whole blog post is worth a read. And, and Tony, the only way I think I could have loved this even more would have been if you had written this for the Amiga, because Amiga people are my favorite subgenre of computer fans, and they are the, the most hardcore people out there. So I love it. Well, that does it for me. Let me know your favorite classic computing platform in the comments. And if you liked this video, give it a like on YouTube. And while you're there, uh, subscribe to Microsoft Developer so that you can get all kinds of great Channel 9 content delivered to your inbox. See you next week.